A very good morning. Welcome to this edition of News for the Hearing Impaired. I'm Rukma and with me is Sonu. Let's begin with the headlines. Second tranche of Atma Nirbhar Bharat package announcements focus on free food grain and affordable renting, rental housing for migrants, concessional credit boost to agriculture and allied sector and special credit facility for street vendors. One nation, one ration card to be achieved by 2021. Prime Minister hails announcements as progressive measures. Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacts with Bill Gates via video conferencing. Dignitaries discuss importance of global coordination on scientific innovation and R&D in the wake of COVID-19 situation. PM Modi also holds telephone conversation with Danish Prime Minister to discuss the pandemic. India calls upon G20 nations to ensure access to essential medicines, treatments and vaccines at affordable prices. Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goel calls for agreement to enable use of IPR flexibilities for this purpose. IRCTC starts collecting destination addresses of passengers travelling on special trains to help contact tracing if required. Railways to issue limited number of waitlisted tickets on special trains commencing journey from 22nd May. REC tickets will not be issued. Over 800 Shramik special trains take home more than 10 lakh stranded migrant workers since 1st May. Special train services on 15 select routes continue. Second phase of Vande Bharat mission to bring back Indians stranded abroad to begin tomorrow. CBSE to allow failed students of classes 9 and 11 to reappear in school based tests as one time extraordinary measure considering COVID 19 situation. Opportunity extended for all students, irrespective of status of exams and number of subjects and attempts. And active cases of COVID-19 in India stand at more than 49,200. Over 26,200 patients cured and discharged with over 2,500 fatalities. Globally, over 44 lakh 38,000 have been infected with over 3 lakh deaths. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman announced the second tranche of the economic stimulus package focusing on migrant workers, street vendors, small traders, the self-employed and small farmers. From subsidized funds to affordable housing, the package ensures that the most vulnerable section of society receives maximum benefits. Nearly 8 crore migrant workers will be provided with free food grains for migrant workers for the next months. For those who are non-card holders, meaning they are neither under the National Food Security Act nor are they holders of any state level cards, for them, they shall be given 5 kgs per person of wheat or rice or 1 kg of chana, so that, per, that is for per family. And if the person is remaining without card, he can also get it. About 8 crore migrants for whom benefit will reach through this free food grain supply. The central government will take the cost and they will not be charged The finance minister also announced that One Nation, One Russian Card will be implemented, which will enable ra Russian card holders to get ration from anywhere in India. Public distribution ration cards can be used in any ration card, any ration shop in any part of the country 
as you move along. So if there is a uh, ration card holder, today he is in Bihar or Karnataka, tomorrow he moves to Rajasthan, he can take his food ration from any ration shop in that state. So national portability, which is now being defined as one nation, one ration card, one nation, one ration card will be implemented and by August 2020, which is another three months, within three months, 67 crore beneficiaries in 23 states, which means the 67 crore beneficiary is 83% of all the PDS population that we are talking about. 83% of all the PDS population will get covered by this. Finance Minister Sitharaman said that three crore farmers have availed concessional loans with the benefit of three-month moratorium. And nearly 2.5 crore farmers will be provided 2 lakh crore rupees of concessional credit through Kisan credit cards. Fishermen and animal husbandry farmers will also be included in this drive. Three crore farmers who are marginal farmers had already benefited from four lakh crores of credit given to them. And those people who are availed of these credit through the Reserve Bank were also given a moratorium. For the next three months, you don't have to pay your EMI and so on. Now, the interest subvention, which is normally given for prompt repayment uh, in time was extended till March. Now we are extending it up to 31st May 2020. So that is a thing which was already availed of and for that we are giving a bit of an extension. And in the last two months, 25 lakh new Kisan credit cards have been given, which entails that they can take concessional credit, they're actually marginal farmers. So we've not forgotten them. And those two, 25 lakh new Kisan credit card holders have also been given or sanctioned a loan which totals to 25,000 crores. The government announced uh, several other measures to facilitate migrant workers. Uh, on reforms uh, to ensure worker welfare. The government is looking forward to convert government-funded housing in major cities to affordable rental housing complexes for urban poor migrants, increasing average wage rate from 187 rupees to 202 rupees, reskilling of retrenched workers, portability of welfare benefits for migrant workers, all occupation to be open to women for 24 hours a day with proper safety measures in place. Universalization of minimum wages, a provision of social security and fund for unorganized workers, appointment letter for all workers, extension of ESIC coverage to employees working in all establishments, including those with less than 10 employees. The government also announced measures to improve liquidity. A working capital loan of 10,000 rupees each will be given to 50 lakh street vendors who were rendered jobless by the lockdown. A 6,000 crore rupee employment push using compensatory afforestation management and planning authority funds was also announced. These measures will address grievances of migrant workers as well as boost the economy. Most of their uh, livelihood has been adversely affected. Street vendors have not been allowed to do anything during the lockdown. And therefore, within a month, the government will launch the special scheme, which will faci facilitate easy access to credit for all the street vendors. And when I say all the street vendors, there are 50 lakh street vendors as per one estimation which comes from all the state governments. 50 lakh street vendors will be able to avail of the 5,000 crore special credit facility through which w once the lockdown is lifted, they can start their business back, they can buy their uh, products to sell and so on. 
So 50 lakh street vendors will be taken care of. We are giving an initial working capital of up to 10,000 rupees. And for this, we expect a liquidity provision of 5,000 crores will be made by the government. The Prime Minister hailed the announcements by the Finance Minister as progressive measures. He said in a tweet, the announcements by Finance Minister N. C. Tharaman will especially benefit our farmers and migrant workers. The announcements include a series of progressive measures and will boost food security, credit to farmers as well as street vendors. Atmanirbhar Bharat Package. Hashtag Atmanirbhar Package. And Prime Minister Modi interacted with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation co-chair Mr. Bill Gates via video conference yesterday. They discussed the global response to COVID-19 and the importance of global coordination on scientific innovation to combat the pandemic. PM Modi highlighted India's conscious approach in its fight against the health crisis, which is based on ensuring public engagement through appropriate messaging. He explained how this people-centric, bottom-up approach has helped win acceptability for physical distancing. Respect for frontline workers, wearing of masks, uh, maintaining proper hygiene and respecting lockdown provisions. The Prime Minister also highlighted how some of the previous developmental initiatives taken by the government, such as expanding financial inclusion, strengthening last-mile delivery of health services, popularizing cleanliness and hygiene through the Swachh Bharat Mission, drawing upon India's Ayurvedic wisdom to enhance people's immunity, etc., had helped increase the effectiveness of India's response to the present pandemic. Prime Minister appreciated the health-related work being done by the Gates Foundation, not just in India, but also in many other parts of the world, including for coordinating global response to COVID-19. PM Modi sought suggestions from Mr. Gates on how India's capacities and capabilities could be better leveraged for the general benefit of the world. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had a telephonic conversation with his counterpart in Denmark, Mette Frederiksen. The leaders compared notes on the steps taken in the two countries to tackle the COVID-19 situation. The Prime Minister appreciated Denmark's success in lifting the lockdown restrictions without causing an increase in infections. The leaders agreed that Indian and Denmark's experts would remain in touch to learn from each other's experience. Both leaders reiterated their shared desire to further strengthen India-Denmark relations and discuss the ways in which both countries could work together in the post-COVID world, agreeing that sectors like health research clean and green energy and climate change resilience offer tremendous scope for mutually beneficial collaboration. The leaders committed themselves to work towards the goal of creating a robust green strategic partnership between India and Denmark. India on Thursday called for an agreement between G20 nations to enable the use of flexibilities under a WTO pact on intellectual property rights to ensure access to essential medicines, treatments and vaccines at affordable prices. In his interventions during the second G20 virtual trade and investment ministers meeting, Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal called upon the G20 nations also to agree to provide diagnostic and protective equipment and healthcare professionals across borders where they are most needed. The Commerce Minister said that doing away with the policy instrument of export restrictions is not a panacea that will guarantee access to medical products and food for all. He said that more effective and lasting way to ensure food security of the most vulnerable would be by agreeing to eliminate the historic asymmetries in the agreement on agriculture and delivering on the long-standing ministerial mandate to establish permanent, adequate and accessible disciplines on public stock holding for food security purposes by the 12th Ministerial Conference of the WTO. 
Widely regarded as the pharmacy of the world, the Commerce Minister said India is also proactively partnering in global efforts to develop vaccines and effective treatment for this disease. He said India will offer its full support to any global engagements to further this cause. We had the G20 Trade Minister's virtual meeting, the second such meeting that, that has been held in which India presented a strong case for global partnerships and cooperation to support each other during the COVID-19 crisis in a transparent and fair manner. India on its part has played the role of a responsible global citizen by providing medicines to over 120 countries across the world to help them fight, fight the global pandemic COVID-19. CBSE has decided that all failed students of classes 9 and 11 will be provided an opportunity to appear in school-based online or offline or innovative tests again. This would be a one-time measure in extraordinary situation. Opportunity will be extended to students irrespective of whether their exams have been complete and the exam results have been released or their exams have not been completed. The facility is to be extended irrespective of the number of subjects and attempts. The government is running several trains to take migrant workers and laborers trapped in other states of the country to their home states. Indian Railways has decided to issue waiting list tickets from the 22nd of May. Now, 50% fee will not be deducted on cancellation of tickets in special trains and the obligation to cancel the ticket 24 hours before has been removed. Railways have also fixed the waiting list limit in these trains. Railways has made a waiting list of 100 tickets for AC3 tier, 50 for AC2 tier, 100 for chair car and 20 for first class AC, also 20 for executive class and 200 tickets for sleeper class. For the journey starting from the 22nd of this month, changes will be made in tickets booked from the 15th of May. Since the maximum period of reservation for special trains has been kept for seven days, passengers will be able to book tickets for the waiting list from the 15th of May. There will be no RSE ticket in these trains. Meanwhile, IRCTC has started taking the destination addresses of all passengers booking tickets from the 13th of May. This will help authorities co in contact tracing if required later. Special Shramik trains are ferrying stranded passengers across the country. The railways has operated 800 Shramik special trains since the 1st of May, ferrying home 10 lakh migrant workers stranded in various parts of the country due to the coronavirus-triggered lockdown. Railway Minister Piyush Goyal in a tweet said, with the hard work of railways employees, since 1st May 2020, Indian Railways has carried 10 lakh Shramiks in 800 trains to their home states. He also praised railway employees for working with full devotion in the service of citizens during the crisis. Of these, Uttar Pradesh received the maximum number of trains followed by Bihar. A special train carrying stranded passengers from Mumbai arrived in Delhi on Thursday. Passengers followed social distancing norms. A special train from Delhi also reached the Sabarmati Junction in Ahmedabad. All passengers were sanitized on arrival at the station. More special trains also reached Jammu and Dibruga from New Delhi carrying stranded passengers and those wanting to go back home. And on day 8 of the Vande Bharat mission, a Delhi-bound flight from Dhaka brought back home 70 Indian nationals stuck abroad. The people were overwhelmed as they came home and thanked the government for the initiative. 
More than 44 lakh people have been infected by novel coronavirus globally. 3 lakh people have died worldwide. The U.S. currently accounts for the highest number of coronavirus deaths in the world. The United States recorded 1,754 new coronavirus deaths uh, in the past 24 hours, taking the toll to 85,884. President Trump has said that he intends to prepare the country for future pandemics by restocking the national stockpile. However, Trump has confirmed that his administration has asked for the withdrawal from American pension fund investments in China and also has ruled out renegotiating a trade deal with China. Meanwhile, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has said that five regions of New York State can be reopened and some businesses can resume functioning from the 15th of May. The first phase of reopening will be watched for at least two weeks before adding more jobs and businesses back onto the reopening list. The New York Stock Exchange trading floor will partially reopen on the 26th of May after over two months of closing down due to to control the spread of coronavirus. In other updates, hundreds protested in Minnesota and Michigan against the stay-at-home orders and demanded the reopening of states. Protesters expressed concern that the prolonged lockdowns could be used by the government to abuse its power. The two states extended stay-at-home orders until at least May 28th to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Britain will be using an antibody test for COVID-19 in the coming days, focusing its use on health workers and carers as announced by England's Deputy Chief Medical Officer following the lead of the European Union and the U.S., which have already given preliminary approval to the tests. Mass antibody testing with millions of kits is being considered by many countries as a way to speed the reopening of economies devastated by lockdowns and to introduce more tailored social distancing measures. However, the COVID-19 death toll in the United Kingdom has risen by 428 to 33,693. A forest of placards celebrating the National Health Service and other key workers sprung up as part of an art installation on the border of an East London park. The work of artist Peter Liversage consists of hundreds of text-heavy, multicolored signs arranged along the roadside. Elements have continually been added over the past two months, as well as praise for the NHS. The signs give thanks for workers, including postal workers, teachers and binmen. Also, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his fiancée, Carrie Simons, joined Britain's nationwide in a weekly round of applause in tribute to care workers and hospital staff. People across the UK have been cheering, banging pots and pans and playing musical instruments every Thursday evening since the applause became an emotional weekly ritual when it first took place on March 26th. Britain is now the worst hit country in Europe with 33,693 deaths from COVID-19. And in an announcement, President Vladimir Putin of Russia said that the country's education minister had caught the new coronavirus, making him at least the sixth senior official to be swept up in the pandemic. The Russian president also announced the gradual easing of corona-related lockdown measures, allowing work of basic sectors of the economy, such as construction and industry. According to new rules introduced last Tuesday, citizens are advised to wear masks and gloves on public transport and in grocery stores, although Moscow streets remained visibly more bustling. As coronavirus cases continue to pile, Moscow will begin free mass testing of citizens for the virus from the 15th of May, Moscow Mayor Sergei Sobyanin said on his website with a target of 100,000 people a day by the end of the month. The mayor said that around 70,000 blood analysis tests will be offered every few days in the initial rollout. 
Russia on Thursday reported 9,974 new confirmed cases of the virus in the past 24 hours. Meanwhile, the official death toll has reached. <laughs>